Welcome to Growing in Grace, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. And now, here's the host of Growing in Grace, Mike Kapler and Joel Barizaki. Hey, I'm Joel. Mike is with me. We're glad to have you along. Mike, we've been kind of, for the last few weeks, been talking about the peace of God and the peace that we have in God by faith. Uh, because of God's grace, because of what the one man, Jesus Christ, uh, did for us. He was bruised for our transgressions. Uh, you know, the chastisement for our peace was upon him. It was, it was all upon Christ. You know, sin entered the world through Adam and, uh, righteousness, uh, came, uh, back into the world through the one man, Jesus Christ. So we're kinda, gonna, just kinda moving into, you know, this, uh, this difference, I guess, between what happened when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and uh, the difference between that and what the one man, Jesus Christ, has done on our behalf and, and how he's restored mankind to God and, and to peace with God. Here we go. Here we are, Mike, and how are you doing this week? Doing good, Joel. You know, and I, I think even back to before the fruit was eaten, a place of perfection, a place of paradise, a place of peace, like we've been talking Everything was in order. Everything was great. <laughs> and yeah, we all know the rest of the story. After the after the disobeyment took place and the fruit was eaten, when God told them not to eat of that one tree, probably could have anything else in the world. We're we're, we're such kids, and and things haven't changed throughout these thousands of years, Joel. I mean, you could have a car lot full of cars, and tell your teenager that they could drive any car on the lot except this one over here. <laughs> and guess which one they're going to try to drive. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like that with Adam and Eve. But the thing I wanted to get to here was that before they ate of the fruit, uh, God is good. He's on your side. And we live in a fallen world where bad things happen, uh, and sometimes they happen to very good people. All right, But in most cases, Joel, I, I'm, I'm afraid that most of the time God gets the blame for something that's really not his fault in this fallen world. But God has always desired the very best for mankind. And it was demonstrated back in the Garden of Eden. We, we see that uh, right from the very beginning of the Bible. Uh, Adam was placed there. Eve was placed there. They didn't lack. There was no suffering. They didn't get sick. There was no pain in the Garden of Eden. God proved even early on that his desire for mankind was to provide nothing but good. And it was after the fall and after the disobeyment uh, where man willingly uh, chose the wrong route, deceived into it, but willingly did it. Uh, And then everything else that comes with it that's negative. I just want people to know who are tuning in today, Joel, no matter what they're going through, um, God is not the one who is your enemy. He's not the one that's putting bad things that, that may be bringing you down in life a little bit. He's not the one. You do have an enemy in this life, but it's not God. And he he'll see you through it. Yeah, those are great words of encouragement. Uh, God is good. Not uh, he he hasn't provided evil for us. He's provided good for us. And you know, in this this choice that you were you know talking about with with Adam and Eve and and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. God wasn't trying to keep something from Adam and Eve. He was trying to protect them in in offering them, and he was he was trying to keep them in the life. That he that they had in him, they were trying. He was trying to keep them in his goodness by offering them to eat freely from the tree of life and uh, to stay away from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He did in his love. He gave them a choice, and like you say, if people are 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 given a choice and told not to go one way, they're more you know more than likely they're going to go for the one that uh, they're not supposed to. But it wasn't a matter of well, I just think that you better just not do that you know it it was he had a purpose in wanting them to eat from the tree of life and that's because he's good it's because god loves all of his creation and he only wants the best for everybody and so he did offer adam and eve the best of the best of the best they were born in paradise they remained in paradise until they made the choice to uh to not believe god and, and what he and his goodness had said, and and to uh, disregard the good that he had provided for them, 
and the paradise that he had provided for them, and they fell for the lie. And, and they didn't trust him, but rather they trusted the enemy. They trusted the serpent and, and believed that what the serpent had said to them, uh, that they would be like God when they already were like God. Uh, but they fell for the deceit of the serpent, and they chose to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And uh, through that, sin entered the world. And as Romans 5 says, uh, death entered the world through sin, uh, because of sin. And uh, it spread to everybody because everybody sinned. And there you have the mess that the world is in. God can't be blamed for that. God is good. God is always good, and he, he always wants the best for us. Well, and even under the Old Covenant, Joel, under the law, God desired to pour out his blessings on men. Uh, when, when God found them who believed and obeyed him and, and, and tried to walk in faith, uh, he would shower them with goodness. I mean, you think of many of the, uh, the Old Testament saints, uh, the patriarchs. I love that word. Well, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a patriarch. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> A lot of those guys, they, they were wealthy men. I mean, they would they would be very rich, even by today's standards, if they were living today, with the blessings that God brought upon them. Uh, so the law gave provision for God's blessings. Uh, he, he had always wanted us to, to live in his provision and power. That's the way he's always wanted it. So there were many promises of, of healing, prosperity, uh, success, peace, joy. There was all, all the good things that you can think of. There were even provisions... Uh, in in the old covenant law that uh, were provided uh, even through that uh, the, the only problem was uh, most people had a hard time living in it because to qualify for the blessings uh, you had to you had to live a certain way and and do certain things and that's what makes the new covenant so much better it's established upon better promises because it's a covenant between God and Jesus his son and uh, Jesus of course having made the exchange uh, where we could uh, take his place as he took ours Yep, that's the truth. And, you know, even when, you know, when Adam had chosen to eat from the tree that that would eventually lead to sin and death, you know, speaking of God's goodness, even though Adam made the choice and sin entered and death entered, judgment entered, God still, in his goodness, desired to make it possible for man who had chosen to to distrust him to mis, to not trust him but had chosen to believe you know the deceit of the enemy uh god still in his goodness provided a way for man uh to return to him uh, it had to be a matter of trust but first it had to be a matter of this covenant that you're talking about in which god the father made a covenant with god the son and he went upon the cross and 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 he came to the earth uh, fulfilled everything that the Father had sent him to do and and completed the covenant in a way that no one else ever could have done. God did all this. Why? Because he so loved the world and because he's good. And he provided the way. It's, you know, through Adam, you know, 1 Corinthians 15, 22, it says, In Adam all die, uh, but even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Why? Because God is good, and because he has provided this way, that uh, even though death entered the world through through uh, the one man, Adam, God made the way through the one man, Jesus Christ, for anyone who would trust in him, anyone who would believe this thing that Christ has done, uh, would be made alive. And just it just goes to show that God is good, and, and he's, he never intends evil toward us. Well, and, and that's the truth, Joel, and, and you can see, you can get a, a, an idea of what God is like uh, because uh, the life of Christ was a manifestation of God in action. I mean, that's what Jesus was. He was God in action, living in a man's body. And um, everywhere Jesus went, uh, the book of Acts tells us that it's about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Every, I never seen Jesus turn anybody down, turn anybody away. This was something new for a lot of the Jewish believers who had thought that God was, was out to get them a lot of the time, and, and that uh, uh, that simply is not the case. A lot of believers today feel that way. A lot of people today think that uh, uh, God puts sickness on people or brings tornadoes to destroy people and that he has some sort of mysterious purpose behind all of it. These are all results of, of a fallen world, uh, not because uh, God wills for it to happen. Does he allow it to happen? 
uh, yes, just the way that he allowed Adam and Eve to, to sin in the first place, but that's not what he wanted. And I think sometimes people get confused with uh, what God wills and, and what he allows. They are not necessarily synonymous. They are not the same thing. Yeah, I think that's true. And, I, you know, I like what you're saying there about how, when you, in fact, what Jesus said himself. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And, and so Jesus, as you say, Mike, he went, he went around doing good, healing those who were oppressed of the devil. Jesus went about doing good, and yet we have Christians who who see God in, in a completely different way. But if they've seen Jesus, whatever you see Jesus do, that's the Father. Uh, that's a great picture of the Father. Now, when Jesus walked around, I, I heard someone, I can't take credit for this, I heard someone else say this recently. I don't know if it was you, Mike, or somebody else, but um, you never saw Jesus going around, you know, finding someone who was caught in a sin and saying, well, cursed are you with sickness. He, he, he didn't go around bringing sickness upon people when they were caught in sin. What he did was he healed them. What he did was he told them that they were forgiven. What, what Christ did was, was he provided life and grace uh, for these people. There's a big co- contrast between what we, what a lot of people perceive God to be, you know, this evil person out to strike you with a lightning bolt when, when you've uh, done bad, and out to just do you in uh, when you're not living up to his standards. The big contrast between that and the love and grace that was shown to mankind through Jesus Christ, both in, uh, in, in his actions when he was on the earth and, of course, in the ultimate action, action of his uh, sacrifice in taking the sin of all of mankind upon himself. Even the woman in the act of adultery. I mean, we all know that story. Jesus writing in the dirt while others dropped their rocks. But they were willing to follow the law and do what the law said to do and stone her to death because she was caught in the act of adultery. Uh, what did Jesus do there? You know, Joel, I've, I've seen, uh, even in our modern day age, uh, where a celebrity, well, how about this? How about a Christian celebrity getting caught in some sort of tangled web of sin, or at least the appearance of it, and then uh, we we won't buy their records anymore or watch their television program anymore unless they go through some sort of a nine-week uh, counseling process mm-hmm. and come out and uh, confess in front of everybody and admit that they did wrong and that they feel bad about it. And, we, we set up our own standards before we accept people back into the fold. What did Jesus tell this woman? Hey, you don't have to do this anymore. Uh, you're forgiven. He made it as... I mean, it, it, Joel, it's so easy. Yes. Most people don't even believe it. That's right. We, we think we have to add something to it for somebody else to receive, uh, you know, forgiveness or to be positioned back into a place where, where they can be a, uh, an example or a leader again uh, when really the price has already been paid Everything that needs to be done has been done. I'm not saying that counseling isn't necessary in some cases for people who have gone through a, a difficult thing. I'm just saying that sometimes we uh, modern-day Pharisees don't mean to necessarily, but we, we sometimes easily start putting uh, requirements of our own before we uh, let somebody else um, fulfill what God has for them in their life and perhaps in their ministry. Yeah, we definitely make it harder than, uh, than what it is and the simplicity that is truly found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is Growing in Grace. Check us out at graceroots.org, and we'll be back with you again next time. You've been listening to Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Barizaki, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. 